Hello there, and welcome aboard another episode of Rule the Waves 2 Design Studies. I'm your host, Katori87, and today we will be taking a look at armor protection schemes. So, I have seen several different uh, armor protection schemes available. We have the classic turtleback armor style, we have the protected cruiser, and we have the uh, armored shell, specifically, which is used with the all or nothing armor protection scheme. So in the interest of finding out how well those work, today we're gonna to be taking a look at a few different battlecruiser designs. So let's get this started. First of all, we'll take a quick look in the research and you'll notice that I have rolled back our technology to approximately the 1912 era. Oh, not that one. Uh, yeah, here we go. So fire control, hull construction, uh, turrets and mountings, ship design, and all that other stuff has been rolled back. So the ships that we'll be designing, even though the date here says 1920, the ships we'll be designing today are essentially 1912 era designs. So let's get this party started. All right, first things first, the best way to get a good, decent looking early armored cruiser superstructure is to start, up, or correction, battle cruiser superstructure. We start off with an armored cruiser. So we'll auto design one of these. Let's go a couple more times. There we go, that's a decent looking superstructure. We'll just reclassify that to be a battle cruiser and we'll crank up the displacement to something reasonable for the era. So we'll go about, we'll say 2,500 tons. That's pretty decent. Crank up the guns to about a 12 inch caliber. That's probably not the biggest that we could put on, that we could put on here, but since our goal is to compare the effects of different armor styles, I do want a smaller caliber of gun and heavier armor to try and highlight the differences between the different protection schemes. All right, uh, next up, speed looks good. Fuel type, we want oil as always. Uh, we'll crank our ammunition up to 120. We'll just do 12 of each other gun type. There we go, looking good. Uh, we're gonna pass on torpedo protection now so I can devote more to the belts for comparison purposes. Clear off torpedoes, clear out guns, don't need those. All right, so all that looks good. All righty, so next thing, we're gonna go to a flat deck on top of belt. And let's see what kind of armor we can put on here. I'm gonna try for 11 inch. We'll drop the extended stuff down to zero. So we got our proper all or nothing, there we go. And let's see what kind of protection we can squeeze in. There we go, a little bit overweight. But if we drop these secondaries down to two inches, there we go. Looks good. Can we squeeze a little more belt on there? Oh, a little more. Oh, a little bit too heavy there. Hmm. All right, so it looks like we're stuck with 11 and a half inch belt. How's that looking on our immunity zone? Actually, that's looking pretty good. We are officially totally immune at ranges as close as 10,000 yards. More than that, and then we could potentially be penetrated in the magazine spaces. All right, so that is one possibility. Uh, I'm going to save this. Actually, let's do a quick check. Yep, I know it has less torpedo protection. That's fine. It's all about the armor check. All right, so this is a... All right, so this is the all or nothing battle cruiser. All right, so we're gonna save that. Start developing. And next up, Let's do the same thing. So we're just gonna open that and we're gonna rearrange our armor protection. So we're gonna go to a sloped deck armor style 
and we're gonna drop this down. Let's try, I don't know, 10 inches, maybe an inch of deck extended, two inches of belt extended, just to see. So one of the interesting things that I have heard is that adding some belt extended doesn't just cover the extreme ends of the ship, it also covers potentially above the uh, main armor belt as well, hopefully making it less likely to get uh, dangerous hits like uh, feed water hits or uh, splinters perforating uptakes. So that's one of the big things that I'm really looking forward to seeing. All right, so we've cranked up our belt extended. Uh, we're a little bit overweight here, so what's going on with that? Let's drop that down just a little more. Well, hang on, there's an easy fix here. We'll just drop our turrets down. There we go. All right, and we're still overweight. A little bit, let's drop that down a little more. Maybe a 10.5, there we go. All right, nailed it. So that gives us a 10 inch belt, two inch belt extended, one inch deck extended, still decent protection all around. Uh, I think that's pretty good. All right, so we're gonna call this the sloped deck battle cruiser. Quick review of that, okay. What's our protection zone? So this one is protected out to 13,000 yards, but closer than that and we're gonna be in trouble. So that's a small zone between 10,000 and 13,000 that the all or nothing ship theoretically has an advantage. We'll see if that actually plays out when we test it. All right, so we've got those, save that. Okay, so we're going to start developing that. And then our last one. So this one is going to be taking that belt extended test in the extreme direction. So we're going to pile that one on as far as we can go. And we're going to go for an equal value between belt and belt extended. And it looks like we can squeeze a little bit more on there. 6.5, a little bit overweight there. We'll shave off a bit from the conning tower. There we go. So that's only a six and a half inch belt, but it goes all over the ship. That doesn't give us any theoretical immunity zone or no total immunity zones. But remember the effects of angle of impact on uh, penetration is a significant consideration. So let's see, we're gonna call this uh, let's see, so that's a slope deck design. Uh, we'll call this the slope deck two just because it's another variation of the slope deck design. All right, so we're gonna save that. Okay, and now that we've got all of those under development. We'll just move right along until those design studies are done. Okay, one more turn, still don't care. Alrighty, well, now I we need to actually build these things. So we're gonna go through one at a time, build ship. We're gonna start with 
This one. All or nothing one, tack one. And then we do all or nothing one, tack two. And then we do all or nothing one, tack three. And then we do all or nothing one, tack four. And well, this is gonna be really tedious, so I'm just gonna save you guys the pain. And I will be back shortly with these battle cruisers all completed and ready to go. So we'll be right back. And we're back. All right, we've got three nice groups of five battle cruisers each. Five of each type of design. So next big thing, we're gonna run a few fleet exercises to see which ones win out and what sorts of critical hits and other bad things actually happen to them. So, first things first, we're going to start off with the All or Nothing versus the uh, standard design. And let's see what kind of stuff happens. So, fleet exercise. We're going to start off with a new division. And we're going to... Let's see. Well, we got to go through one at a time. So, add, 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 add. And all right, so that is all of the all or nothing ones. Let me go over here to the main force. And we're going to do the first design. Let's do that. Two, three, four, five. All right. And I think that'll do the job just fine. Five enemy battle cruisers with turtle back armor. Versus the, or sorry, sloped deck armor. I cannot remember my names today. So sloped deck versus all or nothing. Daytime engagement, good weather, classic start range. So we should have plenty of good conditions for a long range gunnery. And as usual, I'll try and let the AIs run the battle. So hopefully that doesn't have, my own actions don't have any real effect on the outcome here. All right. And yes. Okay, here we go. Spawning in. All right, so the visual range is a little bit longer than our gun range, which is to be expected with 12 inch guns. Although once we start getting up into the bigger calibers, who knows what's gonna happen. All right, so that's that. Oh, yep, nope, no radar here. And I want this division to be AI controlled. All right, and let's get this action started. The first thing the AI does is turn away. Hopefully they turn back. There we go, turning back. And let's see what actually happens when they open fire. All right, targets identified. They're closing in. Keep in mind, both groups have equal skill, equal guns, and equal fire control. And I'm seeing lots of hits dropping in. Okay, there we go. They're just charging right in. Oh, hang on, it reverted to human control. Okay, that's what happened. All right, back to AI. Let's see what they do. All right, so one of these SDs is stopped, so that's not too good. One of ours is engaging more closely, but the chase is on. Again, the big things that we're looking for are critical hits and stuff that causes significant speed damage to the ships. That's what we're ultimately trying to compare here. And it reverted again. All right, back to AI control. See what they do. It's the second one slowing down. There we go, back on course. All right, looks like one of ours is lagging behind. And it reverted. Okay, back to AI control. Looks like we have had some speed damage. But they are still fighting fit, 
and chasing just fine. Okay, chasing this other one. Wow, this is a very decisive result. Okay, we'll pause again. Switch back to AI control. Yeah, this is what we call a blowout. That is very heavily in our favor. And I wonder how... Oh, come on, stop going back to AI control. I want AI doing the driving, not me. I'm just here to watch. But yeah, we got one, two, three enemy ships down, and the others are scattered, and all we've got is one damaged ship so far. Oh, come on. All right, fine. We'll just keep it as AI control. And we'll pick up the speed a little. See if we're able to close. Nope. It's a negative. Looks like it's getting away. Oh, and then they randomly decide to turn. That was weird. Back to AI control. And we keep chasing. Switch that thing back to AI control and there we go. There comes night. Slow down to cruising. And we'll switch back to line ahead. Just because why not? Alright. And I think that's about it. We'll just head on north. And wrap this thing up. Okay, well, that was very interesting. Yeah, that was decisive. I want to know what happened. All right, so ship details. Ugh, I'm seeing a lot fewer hits on my ships. So what the heck happened? What went wrong? All right, so well, let's, let's take a look. Here's one that took a lot of damage. Let's see what kind of events happened. Okay, whole pass through hits. Turret hits that we bounced. So we still had plenty of protection against those. At that range, whole pass through hit, yep. Endrum hit belt, bounced that at 8,000 yards. Superstructure hit, clean through. Uh, there it is. Splinters in the uptakes. So that's one. And then... Well, actually, that is legitimate. That is really close. And then we get at four and a half thousand yards, engine room hit, turrets disabled, and things went very poorly for them after that. All right. Let's see, what other stuff do we have in here? Yeah, I'm not seeing any other significant stuff here. They're starting to take flooding damage. Engine room hit B. Ba oh, that was a four inch hit, Never mind. That's not gonna do anything. Superstructure fire started. Yeah, all right. What about this one? What do we got? So a turret disabled at 15,000 yards. Sorry, 15 and a half thousand yards. Hull pass through hits, but we're starting to see six inch hits as well. Hull hit belt penetrated. Splinters in the uptakes at 8,000 yards. And it seems like it goes downhill from there. 
I wonder what happened there. So I know that for a little while I was under manual control when I didn't intend to be, and that may have resulted in steadier gun platforms than what the AI usually has. So that might have swung things. I will have to take a look and see what happens when we go the other way around. All right, so here we go. Bouncing a belt hit, superstructure passer hit at the same range. Oh, here we got a belt extended hit at 15,000 yards, and that just goes right through. Which, well, it's two inches, so that, that's expected. All right, then they close in to 6,000 yards, and they just start punching through like it's nothing. Just like butter. So I don't think that had any significant effect. Yeah, here we got more splinters in the uptakes. I don't think that had any effect or any sort of protection against what we're trying to do. That said, I do think we'll have to try the other side of things. All right, let's take a look at my heaviest damaged all or nothing ship and see what happened there. All right, so we bounced a six inch hit. Bounced a 12 inch hit at 8,000 yards. We did take damage from four and a half hull hits at relatively long ranges from four inch guns. So that's the sort of thing that the belt extended armor is supposed to be preventing. All right, got some superstructure hits. Near miss. Secondary battery hit. There we go. Belt extended, deck extended. Splinters damage hull. Again, this is the sort of thing that the belt extended stuff is supposed to be avoiding. And honestly, I don't remember seeing any of the splinters damage hull effects. So that is significant. Seeing a few more superstructure hits. Turret knocked out right there at 4,000 yards, which totally makes sense. Another turret destroyed. Six inch gun punching through secondaries as expected. And there we go. Superstructure hit belt extended. Fire started. But they're able to get it under control. Okay, so that is a significant consideration, though. These sheer differences in outcome. This is a very noticeable change. All right. What about some of these other ones? This guy took quite a few heavy hits. Let's see. Turret disabled. Turret disabled. Belt extended hit. Bouncing a belt engine belt hit at very, very close range. That's 8,000 yards. That is well inside the theoretical immunity zone. So we just bounced it like a champ. So that's the sort of effect that we're hoping to see on the uh, other uh, sloped deck style battlecruiser. All right, and here we go. Super structure hit. I'm not seeing any... Oh, here we go. Here's another splinters in the hull. Again, on that belt extended, deck extended. That doesn't have any protection. As we keep on going... Keep on going... Lots of damage on the enemy and nothing else. All right. Well... That looks pretty decisive to me. The only way to be sure, though, is to try it from the other way around. Superstructure hit. Conning tower hit. Bounced that like a champ. Superstructure hit. Yeah, they were able to punch our belt at closer ranges, so that wasn't too big of an issue. 
Yeah, look at that. Right through. This guy took a lot of propulsion damage. Despite the uh, extra concentrated armor. But I was punching the main belt. Detaches independently. Yeah, so it looks like most of the initial damage was during the initial closing of the lines. Alright. Uh, I think we will call that good for now. And uh, yeah, let's close this out and start a new training exercise. Alrighty, and we are back. This time I will be leading the slope deck battlecruisers against the all or nothing battlecruisers and we will see what happens. So, yep, here we go. So last time I turned it over to AI control, but it immediately turned it around and then started charging in and then gave up and reverted to my control. So I think we're just going to, you know, just kind of charge in right here and I will maintain control for now and just set a decent closing rate. Squad max. And we're just going to close on in. See what happens. All right, so we got the first hit. We're starting to take damage. Saw a few messages about fires in there, but it looks like overall we seem to, oh my, one of them just broke off. What's going on here? I have no idea what he's doing. You get back in the fight. There goes another one breaking off. What's the deal here? Oh, bridge destroyed. What? Ah, oh, come on. That's pure dumb luck. Let's see if you're able to get back in. SD-11 has more than 50% flotation damage. Yeah. Oh my god. That's insane. 12-inch waterline belt extended hit. And she's taken heavy flooding since then. At least she's gotten under control. But that's a lot of damage there. I wonder what the difference is. Okay, they've all resumed. Or they've all rejoined. I'm kind of curious. What are the odds of hitting? right now. Okay, so we're currently target aspect. Oh, interesting. Three ships firing at the same target. Ugh. Firing ship damage. Yeah, that's all adding up quite a bit. Interesting. Getting that early damage on them does make a difference, but leading ship on their line is burning quite significantly now. All right, SD2 is falling behind. Interesting, and now they're breaking up. I have no idea what this guy's doing. Did he get rudder damage? Yeah, rudder damage, okay. Well, we'll put you on AI control and see what you can do. All right, well, there's two of them in trouble. Two ships slowly burning out and sinking. Oh, looks like one of our ships just got some pretty bad damage. Open the broadsides. In fact, let's try and open the range a little more. Oh, there goes one. All right, well, I think this is once again a fairly decisive battle here. But we definitely inflicted a lot more damage this time, so we should have more interesting results to see as well.
All right, so once again, we have, what's our hit chance? Ooh, that's a really bad aspect ratio. Penalty for one of your fire controls taken down. Oh, man. Now the damage I can understand. Let's see, what's that now? Smoke interference. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we are running straight downwind. So that does make sense. We're not running fast enough to really deal with it. Okay. There we go. Fast available speed. And there we go. It's over. All right. Let's take a look at the results there. Okay. A lot more hits all around this time. And it looks like a more even spread, too. Okay, so slope deck number one took the most damage. And we're seeing, what? A belt penetrate at 13,000? That should be outside its immunity zone. They must have gotten lucky. We got a deck hit. Belt extended, punches right through. Fire control hits. All right. Critical hit bridge destroyed. All right, so all that does seem pretty significant. Uh, with the bridge destroyed, she falls out of line, keeps on taking hits. All right, so there's another splinters in the uptakes incident. First one for this battle that I've seen. All right, rudder damaged. Bounces engine room hit. And then we get a superstructure hit belt extended that starts a fire. Okay, decent range. Let's see, ah, well. There's the first one of those that I've seen, Splinter's Damage Hull, and that was with a 6-inch gun. Wow, I would not have expected that. Let's see, what other stuff do we have here? Because we didn't see any of those effects on the last battle. Alright, so that was that one. Now we have an all-or-nothing ship. Let's see how this one did. Yep, punches belt extended. Bounces engine room hit. Six inch guns going right through that belt extended. Well, that is pretty significant. Superstructure hit. There's another splinters in the hole. Anything else? Not really, no. And there we go, ship is sinking, okay. And then burning out of control as well, yep. Let's see, slope deck number one one, how did she do? Any of the interesting critical hits? Well, not really. There's another splinters damaged hull. And that was a quite a long range. So yeah, two inches of belt extended does not protect against splinters damaging hull. That still was happening. All right, still looking.
Alright, nothing else there. Let's take a look at this one, see what happened here. This is another one of our all-or-nothing ships. Uh, there's Splinter's Damage Hull. Hull damaged by Splinter's. That was by a four-inch shell, wow. Well, that's interesting, we bounce an engine room hit at 3,000 yards. That is incredible. That just goes to show you how much the uh, angle of impact affects things. And that's something that the AI very much takes advantage of. They will turn all around to try and slope their uh, sides against you. Okay, and then we lost the, uh, these ones as well, and then there was nothing significant on any of the other ships. That was very interesting. Okay, well, once again, we have a stunning defeat for the sloped deck ships. With my control, it was a little bit better, but still not great. Alright, uh, next up, I think it's time to try the extra heavy uh, slope deck design. So we'll see what happens with a super heavy belt extended, if that changes things at all. Alright, we'll be right back. Alright, and we are back. Time for round three. This time it'll be the extreme belt extended ships versus the all or nothing ships. I think my only chance this time is to try and keep the range as open as possible and we'll see what happens. Either that or charge in super duper close. So, we'll see. If I get close enough that I can punch their armor regardless, it won't really matter that much, will it? So I think that's what we're going to try and do. Alright, ship sighted. Squad max. We're going to just charge in as close as we can get. Thank you for all those sighting reports. So our goal is going to be to get to point-blank range as quickly as possible. There we go. Oh man. That did not go well. We've got one ship already lagging behind. I think trying to slope the armor did not protect anyone. Trying to angle that armor did not help. Oh, there we go, they've all detached. Again, breaking off. Put you back in. How are you doing? What even happened to you anyway? Oh my, that did not go well at all. Well, I think we can call this an unmitigated disaster. Well, there's a little bit of random chance there.
Well, that's just about over. Oh, hey, I have a survivor. Why did you not come back? That was very un unhelpful of you. Now I have to wait for this thing to time out. Okay, let's take a look. Well, that was very, very clear results. The uh, extreme belt extended did not seem to make much difference. All right, so lead chip in the formation was this one. But the first hit was a four inch gun. Splinters in the uptakes, second splinters in the uptakes, fire control damaged. Ah, that did not go well. Let's see. How did this guy do? 12 inch hit, bridge destroyed. So they didn't start scoring hits until we were well within the uh, theoretically penetrable zone. But that may just have been due to my poor tactics there. We're going to run this one more time just to see. Nah, I'm still seeing splinters in the uptakes, splinters in the uptakes. All the stuff that this was supposed to protect against did not have the effects that it was supposed to. There's no protection of splinters. There's no protection against uh, hull damage from splinters. That just does not seem effective. We're still getting all the things that we were trying to avoid. So it looks like... Hold on. Yeah, flash fire, random chances like that. Fire spreads. Lots of hull damage there. So it looks like belt extended armor in general is obsolete. It is not helpful at uh, dreadnought technology levels because we can punch right through it with no challenges whatsoever. And it does not prevent the types of undesirable uh, critical hits that we're supposed to be trying to avoid. So yeah. That was very, very unsuccessful. Let's take a look at how this guy did real quick, just to see. Yeah, I'm seeing the same rate of random system hits as I am on the uh, other ships. Does not look like that changed things at all. All right. Yeah, I do not think I'm going to be doing any more rounds of testing for this uh, design study. I think that was quite decisive. The all or nothing armor scheme, certainly amongst the heavier armor designs, is categorically better. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're going to be pushing for. And as soon as it becomes available, that's the thing to use for pretty much everything we've got. Now, of course, who knows? There may be some exceptions for certain outlying vessels, such as uh, early, early pre-dreadnoughts, back before the uh, guns have much penetrating capability. At which point, having protection against 6-inch and 8-inch guns might actually be useful. But overall, eh, it looks like that uh, belt extended stuff is not very helpful. Alright, I think we'll call this episode to a close here. If you have any particular uh, theories or designs you want me to test, let me know and I will take a look. Until then, this is Katori87, signing out.